Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, He gives us many examples. For example, take Surah Al-Ghashiyah. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ He gives the example of a camel. And then He says, وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ He gives the example of the sky. وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ He gives the example of a mountain. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ And He gives the example of earth. And subhanAllah, the Mufassirun, they say that all these four examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is directly linked with us, is linked with a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has surrounded us with things for us to reflect from, things that we can learn from. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith, which is found in Sahih al-Bukhari, that there is a tree amongst all the trees that represents a Muslim in goodness, and that is the palm tree, that is the date palm tree. This is the quote of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we think about a tree, today inshallah in this brief khatra, I want to talk about how this Muslim represents that tree, how that Muslim is resembling that tree. First of all, we can talk about the roots. We put the seed into the ground. We make sure that that seed is surrounded by proper soil. If the soil is corrupt, then that seed, no matter how good of a seed it is, it will never sprout. It will never grow. Likewise, when we talk about the, uh, the concept of roots, when we talk about the concept of the foundation of a tree, and it's starting from that seed, and that seed, and there's, there's roots that go deep into the ground, the first thing that we learn from this is, in order for that seed to grow, it has to be surrounded with proper soil. Likewise, when it comes to the human being, when it comes to the believer, we have to be surrounded by proper people. We have to make sure that we're always in the company of righteous people in order for us to grow. We've heard this before so many times that we are a representation. We are a manifestation. We are a reflection of who, who we are with and who we sit with and who we stand with and who do we hang out with. And that is why we find in the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life that he is told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that who should, you, who should you be with and who you should not be with Allah says وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجَهَ that be around those kind of people who remind themselves about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who remember Allah day and night and not only that but these are ayat that come after this, that comes after the story of those few young men who sought refuge in the cave to protect their iman. And the ulama, they have derived from this that if you really want to protect your faith, then you have to pay attention to who are your friends. You have to pay close attention to who are your companions. What is their mindset like? If they are those who stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, you want to be around those people. No matter what the society calls them. Society may call them, you know, backwards. Society may call them that they are not smart and so forth. But Allah and his Prophet Sallallahu teach us that this is who you need to be around. And once again, going back to the example of that seed, in order for that seed to sprout and grow, it has to be surrounded by proper soil. Number two is that just like it takes seed it takes a seed to time to grow. You put a seed, you water it, and you water it, and you take care of it, and the, the roots begin to go deeper into the ground, and then the plant sprouts. And as that plant sprouts, it's still fertile, it's still weak, it's still, uh, even though it's fertile, it's weak. People can stop right over it, people can kick it, and so forth. But it takes time to grow, brothers and sisters. Likewise, when it comes to the iman of a believer, it takes time to grow. You can cannot grow the iman overnight. We find from Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought Islam, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha says, had Rasulullah sallallahu from day one said, this is halal and this is haram, people have never accepted it. But that's why it took 13 years 13 years to grow and develop that iman of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And that is why in the beginning years, there was no halal and haram. Besides the fact that shirk is haram. Of course we know. We know that we have to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But overall, all the halal and haram, even salat, the five time day salat, came 10 years into the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Why? Because in order for us to stick to our iman and accept everything from Allah and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 
takes time for our iman to develop. And sometimes we make a U-turn in life. We've, we have been living a life of transgression. We're living a life of dhulm. We are committing sins and then we realize, I need to turn my life around. And then we expect that just like that, just like a light switch, I will turn my entire life around. And then we, follow, we find ourselves at times following into the sin. And that is when shaitan brings disparity. And he says, look at you. You try to stop from that sin. Where was the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But that is the disparity of the shaitan. And that is why we have to understand that if I have been committing a haram for so many years, for so many years, and now overnight I want to change that, it may not happen. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes commitment, it takes companionship and so forth in order for us to stay away from the haram. So that is why just like it takes the seed time to sprout, likewise for a believer, it takes their iman time to grow and so forth. The next thing is that just like the roots of the seed that, that come from the seed cannot develop by itself, Likewise, our iman cannot just develop by itself through our own, through just on our own. We have to work on it. We have to proactively work on it. That means salat, siyam, zakat. Of course, zakat is there. Sadaqa, Quran tilawa, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always hearing something. Always being around those kind of people who remind you of doing good. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be around someone that will always give you a lecture. But even if you are around someone that stops you when you're doing something, something that is haram. I've talked about this before. That why was Bani Israel cursed? Because they will see the other committing haram. And because they are my friends, they're my best buddies. I'm going to let them come into haram whatever they want. No. A true friend stops another friend. A true friend says that no matter how deep our friendship is if I see you doing something that is wrong I will stop you that is what a true friend is and a lot of times we will say that what kind of a friend are you I thought you had my back I thought you would you have my back in all circumstances but that is where we put our foot down and say yes I am your friend and good but at the same time I will stick with the haq and I will never stand on the side of battle if I see you doing something that is wrong or you ask me to stand by your side when you have done something that is wrong I will never stand by your side this is something that is happening often today. So just like the root or the seed has to be surrounded by others and not only that, but it has to be surrounded and it has to be given water and sunlight over and over again for that seed to grow. Likewise, we always need a dose of the Quran. We always need a dose of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for us to grow. Now, you talk about after that seed has grown and now it's a full tree. If the roots are deep of that tree, what happens is that no matter what challenges come that way, if even if there's a strong wind that comes, it will never put, it will never throw the tree onto the floor. It can never put the tree onto the floor. That tree will remain there. Yes, it may move. It, you'll see a you'll see a palm tree when there are strong winds that come. You will see that you know you'll see it going. You know you see the the leaves or the branches you know in one direction of the wind and so forth. But you don't see that tree on the ground most often. That is the sign of a believer. Likewise, a believer, no matter what challenges come its way it will always stand firm. Yes, the, the wind may push it down. Adversities may push it off its heels a little, but a person, a true believer, will always remain firm. Even if you get pushed off its heels, and even it does fall, fall down a little, but it will always remain firm in its place. And then the last thing, how it resembles a believer. How does it resemble a believer? It is always forth giving. See, this is something that's beautiful about our deen. Our deen has taught us that you cannot be selfish. Our deen has taught us that the best our are those who just don't only benefit themselves, but they benefit others. For example, the Prophet ﷺ, he did not say, the best person is that person who learns the Qur'an. No. He said, the best person is that person who learns the Qur'an and then teaches it to others. You cannot be selfish in our deen. Why is there a concept of sadqa jariyah? Yes, you're benefiting, but you're benefiting someone else too, right? When you talk about so many different aspects of our deen, it's not only about ourselves, it's about benefiting ourselves, but making sure that we benefit others. You have a date palm tree that provides dates, and from that dates, there is shifa in those dates, and, there, and people gain nourishment from those dates. But subhanAllah, if you look at trees in general, you look at trees in general, so many animals, they eat from that same tree and they benefit the human being too. 
This is why a believer is not a believer if he only benefits himself. A believer is that person who benefits himself and then they benefit others. Think about it for a moment. The day comes when the announcement has been made. Fulan bin Fulan has died. Your announcement has been made in the masjid. You have died, for example. What legacy do you have behind to benefit other people? What have you left behind so people can benefit from it? Are you a person who just paid his bills every single month and you took care of your own matters and you passed away and you have nothing left to show for? That is not what a believer is. A believer leaves behind something. It does something to benefit others. Just like a tree is there and every single animal is benefiting from that tree. A silkworm that eats from that tree, it provides silk. And silk is something that is used by people. When you see a, a, a musk deer eating from the same tree, it provides droplings that has musk in it. It has droplings and there's musk in it. And at the same time, you have other animals eating from that same tree. And other, you see that same bee coming to that same tree or the same flowers and so forth and eating from that. And it provides honey. You have so many plants and they're all are providing. Likewise, a believer is such that they take care of themselves. They maintain their faith. They have a proper surrounding. They're always working on their faith and so forth. But then they do something to benefit others. And it does not have to be that a situation that where you are in the best situation, only then you can help. Many people believe only when I'm in the best situation, only then I will help. Rasulullah taught us, you don't have to be in the best situation to help someone else out if you have a heart if you have a heart and you care for people no matter what your situation is you will be there to help other people and when you help other people and you benefit other people then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran they do righteous deeds but then they call other people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a believer is not a person who only worries about their own akhirah and their own well-being and their own development but a believer is that person who cares about everything I just mentioned but they also want others to be benefited also all the ulama that we see everything that we have learned from our past from our books these were ulama who lived a life and they wrote books they wrote articles today we are benefiting from them from them and their education and so forth that is what a believer is the question is when the Prophet ﷺ gives the example of a tree and the tree benefits the question is, what are we doing to benefit? So these are a few things that we have to look at from the perspective of a tree and from the perspective of Iman and ask ourselves, how much are we like that tree and so forth in terms of the roots, in terms of the tree, and in terms of benefiting others. This is a moment of reflection for all of us. Ask yourself every single day, how much am I doing? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are able to do their own hisab and who are amongst those who are able to do their own reflection on these matters on a daily basis. Amin Rabbil Alameen. What is that? السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما